expect to, to hear from you. And most, uh, more than anything, Father, we just want to offer our hearts to you and to worship you and for you to know how much we love you and how much we are grateful for the blessings that you offer us for your unending grace and your mercy and particularly this morning Father your comfort thank you for walking with us thank you for leaving your presence for us to feel and to know and to learn about and to walk with and we just want to offer, we put aside, we dedicate this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue in worship this morning. And yesterday we had the privilege of having a conference here called Shattering the Stigma around uh, mental illness and the church. And it was such a sweet time of fellowship and hearing of brothers and sisters among us who walk this journey and family members who walk this journey. And it was such a beautiful, sacred time and space. And it just continues to remind me of how so often we come here on Sundays and we're in a tender place. We're in a tender place after things that we have gone through even just within a day. And sometimes we find ourselves in an unexpected place and struggling with something that we didn't anticipate waking up to. And this next song, Cody's going to bring it to us, and it's called My Confidence. And it rings true for us as a team, but also for us as a church. That no matter our circumstance, no matter where we are, that we can take him, the Father, at his word. That we can take him at his word. And that he, truly, he is our confidence. He's the core. He's the core who steadies us. He's the core who strengthens us. And he's the core that empowers us to do his work and his ministry. Amen? So let's learn this song together, but I'm sure it'll be a quick learn. And um, yeah, let's just worship him this morning through the fullness of, of song and singing. When my world is shaken. You are my firm foundation You are my rock of ages Jesus you are My world When my world is shaken You are my firm foundation You are my rock of ages Jesus you are In every circumstance No matter where I am I'll take
take you at your word. You take me by the hand and lead me through the dark into the promised land. Jesus, you are my confidence. Jesus, you are my confidence.
Let's continue just to call on him for our dependence this morning.
Good morning. Good morning, Canby Foursquare folks. Good morning, visitors. Good morning, friends and family. Good morning, folks online. We just want to welcome you this morning and let you know how glad we are that you are here. We're going to take our morning offering in just a moment. So if the ushers could be ready for that. Uh, I did want to send special greetings from Pastor Ron. He is not feeling well. He's got that thing and <laughs> that, I guess it's the flu. I don't know if there's a name for it, but, but be praying for him because he's a tough cookie. And like last weekend, we sort of propped him up to, to preach and on a chair and, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's still going on. So be praying for him. And we're all like this morning when we prayed together, we didn't even hold hands. So if when I greet you, I just give you like an elbow bump, you'll understand. <laughs> Um, so anyway, be praying for him and uh, different people on our staff who have been out this week from that, as well as many family members here at the Canby Foursquare family. So I'm going to call the ushers forward now, and let's pray for our morning offering. Lord Jesus, we are grateful beyond words for your grace, Lord. We are so grateful for your grace in our lives and in our families, Lord. Lord, I pray a special covering over those today who are sick, those who are in tough times, and those who are grieving this morning. Lord, we pray for your covering for all of those that need their arms upheld this morning. Jesus, we pray that you would use this offering for your glory and to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Canby Foursquare Church. My name's Hudson Mickle, and these are your weekend announcements. If this is your first time to Canby Foursquare, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. What I want you to do is reach into the seat back in front of you and grab the welcome card. If you fill this card out and turn it into the welcome desk, we'll give you a free coffee at the cafe. There are a lot of up and coming exciting events in Kidstown. 
That being said, out in the lobby, we have a resource desk specifically for Kidstown. So you, if you have any questions about any of the upcoming events or the changes, anything like that, go ahead and stop by the resource desk out in the lobby. Thursday, January 25th, is our Laundry Love event. This event is an excellent opportunity to get outside the church walls and serve and love on our community. Every single one of you should be a part of this, and I hope to see you there. Last weekend, our Canby interns told you about the mystery dinner. If you're interested in attending this event, out in the lobby, we're selling tickets for only $10. The cool part about this event is that all the money we raise is going to help send our Canby interns on the Kenya missions trip. As usual, if you have any questions about any of the upcoming events, feel free to go to our website, canbyfoursquare.com, or grab a next pamphlet off one of the tables in the back. All right, everybody. That's all the announcements I have for you today. Enjoy the service. All right, good morning, everyone. Morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. You're not. You don't have the flu, so that's a plus. If you're here, and if you are, uh, we have hand sanitizer located in the lobby for your use. Uh, my name's Colin. I get to pastor our youth here, Can't Be Foursquare, and I'm so glad to be here with you. And uh, I believe that uh, this morning's gonna be a good one. Turn to your neighbor and let them know this morning's gonna be a good, good morning. It's gonna be a good morning. So we've been in this series, uh, Overwhelmed, and uh, one of the things that I was processing through as I was asked to speak this Sunday is kind of one of the things that, uh, questions that I've asked, what do I do when I'm overwhelmed, and the question, where is God when I'm overwhelmed? Uh, being overwhelmed, I think, is a natural part of life. We don't really get a, we don't get a rule book or a handbook that says this is how you live, this is how you reach things, you know. Uh, we don't really, we're not handed that and it's a natural part. And uh, could you raise your hand if you've been overwhelmed in your life? It's heavy on, on everyone's heart because at some point you're overwhelmed and then as soon as you get over that, you get another thing of being overwhelmed. So it just kind of keeps happening. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Lamentations 3.22. We're going to get there in a second. Uh, but w- that's where we'll be spending the start of our message this morning. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you that you are with us, that you're with uh, Pastor Ron as he's sick, and all those who are, else who are, Lord. We just uh, we lift them up and pray for healing. And God, we just pray that this morning you would speak through me, and uh, we would be, be changed by your word. In your name, amen. Yeah, being overwhelmed for me is, is pr- comes comes pretty often and naturally. Um, and as I was getting ready for this, I was thinking of this story. Uh, one time when I was in college, I oversaw the maintenance department at our, at our school. And so uh, one of the things that I did during the summer is I, you know, suffered and lived in Southern California all summer long and, uh, you know, going to the beach on the weekends, things like that. And, uh, but we were also tasked with getting the dorms ready for all the students who were coming in. And uh, every year, bef- right before all the students came in, we went, we checked all the toilets, make sure they were flush in, you know, all, all sorts of different things just to get everything ready. And I remember uh, one morning, I, or it was, it was about 11, right before lunch, I get a phone call, hey, Colin, uh, there's a leaking toilet in F2. And F2 is one of our dorms. And I said, okay, well, can you get it to stop? Uh, no, I can't. So I was like, okay. So I run up there. And what had happened is one of my guys had uh, wiggled loose the piping that connects the toilet to the wall. So it was actually not, it was not really a leak. It was more of like a geyser. Um, like you had, we had to, we found jeans and somewhere in like a lost and found bin. And he's like sitting there like trying to stop the water. And there's just, there's two inches of water all on the second floor of this dorm a week before school comes back. 
And uh, so we're, you know, I'm just, we're just sitting, I'm like standing there, I was like, well, we better turn off the water main. Well, the handle on the water main broke when we were trying to turn that off. And I just remember finally, you know, we, we figured it out, we got the solution. I just went up there and I looked and I just sat down in the water and I was like, what are we going to do? We got to replace the sheetrock when it leaks down and all this sorts of stuff. But I just remember being so overwhelmed going, I guess this is what life is like. Sometimes you just got to take a seat and, and acknowledge that you're here and you're overwhelmed, but you'll make it through it. So um, overwhelming things happen. Uh, I would let, um, normally I'd, I'd let this kind of wait and say like, where's God when I'm overwhelmed? But I'm just going to answer that right now. Um, and for those of you who type A, your notes, they're not going to, I'm not going to go in the order of your notes, so I'm sorry. Um, God's going to stretch you in that this morning. Um, but Lamentations 3.22 through 23 says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin each morning. Where is God when you're overwhelmed? He's there forever. He never stops being there. He's always faithful. And every morning we get new mercies. That's where he is. You know, problems in life are a lot like the fast and the furious. First one's okay. Two is all right. Three's getting a little annoying. But four through eight is just excess, and you wish they'd stop. They just, problems keep coming, and a lot of things... Uh, in life have the potential to overwhelm us because every day is a new day. Every day is a new opportunity to experience something you've never experienced, something to go through. And there's no instructions on how to get through the problems that come our way. And one of the things that I, I've realized is that sometimes I like to just push through the problems. Anybody else? Just like, you know what? Yeah, problems are there. I'm just going to push through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it. Uh, but as I've been kind of getting a little bit older and hopefully a little more wiser, um, I, I'm learning how to evaluate what things are overwhelming me in life. Like take, take account of what's overwhelming. Because sometimes I think if you can't take time to evaluate and acknowledge, you're going to be shooting at a target you can't hit. It's like an ever-moving target if you're like, well, I'm just trying to make it through life. Um, that's great. But if you don't know what you're trying to overcome, you're never going to get there. Don't, don't fight a stressed battle of trying to fight the scatters. Fight a focused one. And being overwhelmed can come from anything. It can come from everywhere. Uh, work, it can come from work. Just your job sometimes can be overwhelming. Just the things that you're tasked with daily can be overwhelming. But then you've got to add in coworkers and relationships with them. And anybody got an overwhelming coworker uh, that you have to deal with? And then there's customers. Gosh, they get, they get after you sometime. There's competition for promotions. There's uh, sales. And oh yeah, you've got bosses too. Um, so though, that can all be overwhelming and, and get on top of you and stress you out. And then, then you've got to add family. Everybody got, you got family in here. And um, it can be maybe you're arguing with your spouse. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's children and spouses, maybe it's the dog peed on the new couch and the cat scratched the baby. I mean, just, I mean, family can also overwhelm us. Siblings, parents, um, and then finances uh, can often be overwhelming. Finances can stress us out and get on top of us because sometimes there's not enough money, too many bills. Maybe you have too much money. If you do, I'll, I'll help you with that one. Uh, but do I tithe? Do I not tithe? Uh, then, you know, you start questioning, well, does, does God really need my money? And, you know, those types of things. You start questioning, well, what does God even know? And who is God? And where is God? I've got all this stuff piling up in my life. Where is he? It comes from everywhere. Stress and being overwhelmed, it comes from every angle, every direction, all the time, because life doesn't stop. I remember one of my favorite TV shows is uh, Saved by the Bell. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but I just love, like, Zach Morris, the kind of one of the main characters, he would, he'd like, take a, he'd take a time out from life and everybody would pause. 
And sometimes I just wish that I could be like, hold on, everybody, pause, time out, take a break on life, let me figure some things out. But we all know that that's not how it works. That life comes, it comes at us fast, and that we really have no control over how uh, things come at us. And one of the things that I do know is that um, being overwhelmed happens, and it, it happens frequently, uh, but we also have to realize that that's what the enemy wants to do to us, is he wants to overwhelm us. The enemy really has one job, and that's to come and k- steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came that we may have life and life abundantly. See, the enemy wants you to focus on your problems. He wants you to focus on your circumstances. Because when he can distract you from God... And he places those, those circumstances in front of you, those overwhelming circumstances, and that's all you're focusing on. It's really easy to let that overcome you. It's really easy to be overwhelmed by that. Because it will. It's always going to, if you focus on your circumstances, it's going to be an ever changing target. Because circumstances change. I went to bed last night about 10 30. I woke up about 6, and about 500 circumstances had changed. And I had nothing to do with it, right? Because that's kind of how life happens is things shift and change and they move. And the enemy would love it if we would take the time to just focus on our circumstances. And I have a friend, uh, he always, why I would be, I talk with him all the time and I say, man, I'm just struggling to get through this situation or I'm trying to do this. And he goes, you know what, Colin, if you always do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. And so if you're focusing, always focusing on your circumstances, focusing on the things that are overwhelming you, that, that's, you're going you're gonna to stay there. What gets the attention 99% of your time uh, d- usually determines your destination. But we have hope. We have so much hope. Over, overwhelming things happen. Life happens. It's crazy. But we have so much hope because... God is with us. And where is God when we're overwhelmed? He's not in our fear. He's in our faith. Isaiah uh, 43, 1 and 2 says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. There will be trials in life. That's what the scripture is telling us there, is that when these things happen, I am there with you. I will walk with you because you are mine. See, God proves himself through trials. He's walking through the fire with us. He proves himself because he can't be our healer unless we need to be healed. He can't be our provider unless we need to be provided for. He can't be our savior unless we need, we need saving. And so while trials and overwhelming things happen, what's awesome is that they can be used as a testament to what God can do and who he is and that he's good. God's always with you no matter what you're going through. Even if, like, what I love about God is that even if you got yourself into a situation and a mess, He's going to bail you out. That the fires that we, like, anybody self inflicted wounds? Yeah, uh, pretty guilty of that a lot too. But, like, those happen, and sometimes I don't feel like I deserve God's grace and mercy to come bail me out. But He's so good that he does. He loves us so much that he will, and he can, and he is able to. He's always with us all the time because he loves you, because he cares for you. Another, another way that God is with us when we're overwhelmed is by the people he puts in our lives. I don't know about you guys, but I am uh, a firm believer that that God puts people in your life on purpose. That you don't meet anybody by accident. I mean, some of my best friends are all people that God's placed in my life. Randomly, 
people you meet just out, out of the blue. But God, God is ordaining things that we don't even realize. That people sometimes are put in our, our lives for a season. Sometimes they're put in there forever. Sometimes they're there to let us know that they've been through the same thing. Let us know that God has already beaten that problem for them or overcome the things that they're going through. Sometimes he puts people there just to encourage us and say, hey, you're going to get through this. God ordains things like, like, a, like a master artist. Because I just think even about how my life and I look and how I ended up at Canby was one day I was in Los Angeles and Many of you know Pastor Ron's, uh, one of Pastor Ron's best friends, uh, Robert Flores. And Robert and I, uh, I was being mentored by him. And one day he says, hey, I can go pick up a friend at the airport. Why don't you come with me? You can grab his bags and hang out with us. And so I was like, okay. So I jump in the car and we're, we're driving to the airport and I meet Ron. Pastor, I meet Pastor Ron and, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. You know, grabbed his, grabbed his bags and, of course, his golf clubs and threw them in the trunk. And that's where we met. And then fast forward eight or about eight, year, eight or nine years later, um, almost two years ago, I'm going through one of the most difficult seasons of my life. Um, I know that God had boldly asked me to transition out of where I was at and take a step of faith and go into something unknown. And I don't know about you guys, but the unknown is very overwhelming. What's next is very, very overwhelming. And I remember in that season, I, like, God had, a- had asked me to step out, and then a job opened up, and I was like, awesome, perfect. And I hadn't quite step like I hadn't said, hey, I'm going to step out of faith yet. And I was applying for this job, and I was like, maybe God's saying I can just get this job, and it'll be a nice, clean wrap-up. So I remember sitting there and going, okay, I nailed the interview. I got the job. This is awesome. I get a phone call. Hey, we're going to go a different direction. We're not going to hire you. This is, this is a different church. And I remember very specifically as I'm, I'm sitting in my living room, staring at a blank TV, because when you get overwhelmed, like anybody else, like when you get overwhelmed, sometimes you just need to sit down and like stress a little bit and, you know, pretend there's something on TV. And uh, so I remember, I remember just sitting there going, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I, you know, I, I, just, I had just quit my job. Uh, and it, yeah, it's almost two years to this exact day. And uh, I just remember sitting there going like, what am I going to do? And I look down on my phone and Ron, Ron's calling. You know, a guy who I met like nine years ago and had very, very limited contact with. And he said, hey, by the way, we're looking for a youth pastor. I heard you're in the market. I was like, okay, God, I see you. (laughs) You're good. You got this. I know I'm overwhelmed, but he's not. He's bigger than our problem. He's bigger than our circumstances. So so where is God when we're overwhelmed? He's right there with us where he's always been. He stands there with us when we're facing problems. Joshua 1, nine. If you're being overwhelmed right now and life has got you um, a little stressed and a little, a little crazy, wondering what's next, what's going to happen, this is an encouraging verse for you. It says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Some versions say, wherever you set your foot, I'm there with you. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what things are overwhelming you. I don't know what things you're having to press through and things you're having to navigate. But what I do know is that God is willing to give you whatever ground you're willing to walk on. That if you're willing to go through the process with him, if you're willing to step through the fire with him, he'll be there with you and he'll give you the victory. Because that's what God does, and that's how his character is, is that he's going to step with us, and he's not going to let you lose. Because God is a winner, and God wants us to win. He wants to give us the victory, and he gave us that victory ultimately when he sent his son down to die for us 
so many years ago. See, God's position with you doesn't change. Where he's been, he's always been. When you've overcome things in the past, he's been there. And he'll be there when you overcome things in the future. See, he stays where he's at. I remember as a kid, probably about four, this is one of my earliest memories, um, probably because it was so traumatic. Uh, My mom got lost at Fred Meyer when I was four. I was really worried about her. I was running all over the store, and she got lost. Um, but I just remember that so bit like, it's like my mom was lost. Like, I, like, she was lost, and I couldn't find her, and I was freaking out. It, it wasn't that I was lost, right? Meanwhile, you know, mom's in the freezer aisle waiting for me, uh, because that's where we were the last time we saw each other. But I just thought about that story and how funny it is, is sometimes we run around looking for God, like, where are you, where are you, where are you, like, why aren't you here? Don't you realize the circumstances I'm going through? Don't you realize what's happening in my life? Like, where are you? And you're freaking out. And uh, he's been in the same spot all along. He's been there for you. Standing right there, he's like, I'm right here. Right here with you. I've never left your side. I never went anywhere. It's not his proximity that changes, it's ours. And so I'd encourage you, maybe you're going through a season right now where you feel like God is so distant and he doesn't care about your problems. I would say, do whatever you have to do to get back with Jesus. Do whatever you have to do to get back in position with him. Because sometimes we find ourselves just just doing life and cruising along and letting, letting life happen and then all of a sudden we don't realize where, we, where we've gone and, and, and where we've ended up. And so I want you to know that he's with you always. He's with us. And one of the things that I think helps me is that my God is so much bigger than my circumstances. That no matter what you're going through, God can handle it. No problem is is too big for God. No situation is beyond anything that he can't do. See, God is very able and God is very capable of walking through things with you and giving you the victory over them. See, being overwhelmed, it happens. It's a part of life. It's natural. But what I also know is that God, who is faithful throughout history, when we look through Scripture and just see how faithful God is. I mean, if we look back, my God is able to do a lot. See, my God created the heavens and the earth. See, he took, he took nothing. He took chaos. And he created this world. He created you and me. He created all that we see today. Because that's how powerful he is. You see, my God, he parted the Red Sea when the Israelites were escaping the Egyptians. Parts the Red Sea, they walk across dry land. Not just, not just mud, they, they walk across dry land. And then he closes it as soon as they get out. See, my God took a 15-year-old shepherd boy and had him slay a giant with a slingshot. My God sent his son down to die for me so that I could have everlasting life, so that I could be with him. And you know what? At that point, he overpowered sin, and he overpowered death and proved that he's mighty to save and that he loves me. That's my God. I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know what you're going through, but what I do know is that your circumstances are no comparison to your Savior. They're no comparison to to who God is and what God can do. Because God is able to do incredible things incredible things. 
And I would challenge you and encourage you that if you've been living in fear, stop and start living in faith. Because when we live in fear, what happens is we hunker down to protect ourselves. When we live in fear, we're always worried that something else is going to come after us. You know, we just got done with the holidays, and those can be stressful, and those can be awesome and great. But I I remember specifically for me, they were very, very overwhelming because uh, I had to take my car into the shop twice. I replaced my windshield, and then the day, like two days after I replaced my windshield, I had a chip in my window that I had to get fixed. And it was just like, I just remember that like financial things coming, relational things going. Um, I said something that got misinterpreted, and then it became this big thing, and it's like, I just remember being so overwhelmed, being like, God, why is it all happening at once? And he said, you're looking around at those things. Fix your eyes on me and watch what I can do. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're processing, I gave you, I gave you some space in your notes to, to write down the things that are overwhelming you right now. And I did that so you could take an account of what's going on in your life so that you could take note and say, these are the things that I'm going to pray through. These are the things I need to give to God and let Him handle. Because until we give things up to God, we we can't expect Him to work. Right? It's like holding on to something and saying, you know, fix it, fix it, fix it. You got to let go first. You got to give it up. And like I said, I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're going through. But what I do know is Ephesians 3.20 tells us, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God can deliver in ways that are unimaginable. Circumstances that you're going through, He's got, a, he's got a Ron Swore on the phone to call and say, hey, I got your answer. I got your solution. He's got people there for you. His word is amazing. I don't know about you guys, but I fall behind in my devotions quite often. Reading my Bible, doing my scripture journaling, things like that. I fall, fall behind in it very often. But this year, I've, I've made it a point to, to be in the Word every day. And uh, so far, so good. But what I'm finding is that when I get in His Word, I'm reminded that He is so much bigger than the things we go through. He's so much better than the things of the world, than the people around us. That he cares, that he loves, and that you may be overwhelmed for a minute, but he's not going to give you anything that he can't handle. That's what I love. The scripture says, very simple. He's not going to give you more than he can't handle. And I know that sometimes it's stressful because God can handle a lot more than I can. But it's also one of the best things in the world, knowing my problems aren't mine to solve. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that you love us, that you care for us. And God, as we sit here and, God, I just just know that there's people in here who've got overwhelming job circumstances, financial circumstances, family circumstances that are beyond their control and even beyond anything they can fix, Lord. And God, I pray that we would fix our eyes on you. That God, when we're drowning, we can reach up and we can grab a hold of your hand and be pulled out of the water, just like when Peter was walking with you. God, he fell. He reached down and pulled him up. God, pull pull us up out of our circumstances and let us focus on our Savior. And God, for those of us who are here and who've never said yes to you, God, we just want to give that opportunity to say, I need a Savior. 
And if that's you, would you just lift your hand up and say, I'm ready. I need a savior. God, we need you. We love you. We're so thankful for you. And in your name, amen.